Is your life really hectic and crazy, but you have this inner voice that says, make art. You want to make art, do it. But you just can't find the time. Your life is too crazy and hectic. Well, I'm gonna talk to you about the things that actually have worked for me. I did a little bit of research for this video. There's a lot of advice out there along the lines of, well, you're just blocked and you just have resistance. And if you could just, if you just got your mind right, you could find the time, yeah, you could. Okay, but I find that advice like that sounds so good and I get so inspired by that kind of advice, but it never helps. I had this problem just this morning. I was in agony. I accepted an invitation recently to paint for a big show. I already have a very busy painting schedule because I have a Patreon and I need to paint for those students. And I felt like I just don't have time to do paintings for my Patreon students lately because I'm doing these acrylics. How do I find time? And my solution to that was drop everything and just do a painting for them in the next two days. Just work on that, even though it feels really scary to do that. So for you, that might be in the form of just drop your housework, drop your social engagements, Drop whatever it is that you can, some things you can't, I know, but drop whatever you're doing and just create your art. Sometimes you have to kind of feel like you're letting go of your responsibilities for other things to make time for your art. This is no fun. I'm going to go paint. <laughs> and if your art is important enough to you, it's really worth it. And it's okay. And let go of the guilt. Don't let the guilt control you <laughs> because we have kids. Yeah. Good morning. We have husbands. Smash that subscribe button for more. <laughs> we have houses. We have yards. They all need our attention and our time. Inevitably, you're just going to feel guilty about neglecting them, but you really do deserve it. If there is something that you can drop, even if it's for a half hour a day, do it. Another way that I used to find creative time was to schedule it into my social calendar. So when I lived in Columbia as a single person and I had a pretty busy social life, is I would invite people over to paint with me and tell them, hey, I'll teach you a little bit about painting. I'll paint too. We'll socialize. They're not artists. They love that idea. We had so much fun. We got out a little adult grape juice, got out the paint and just splashed around and had a great time. And everyone had time to create art. They, it got them out of their houses, so they got a little break. And it was a great way to kill two birds with one stone, create art and socialize. If you just can't create art because things are too hectic in your home, what you could do is schedule a class. And it's a fun way to meet people in your community who also love art. And it's a way to get you out of your hectic house where you cannot focus enough to do your art and go somewhere else and make art. So that's a possibility here in my community. We have all kinds of different things. Okay, here's another new thing that I did very recently when I took on this show, I knew that I had to be feeling my best and I had developed a few unhealthy habits, especially during the pandemic, which included some adult grape juice. Whenever I indulge in that the next day, I'm so tired and I don't feel my best and I don't get nearly as much done. So it really frees up a lot of time for me to feel good from making healthy choices with my food. And that has really cut down on the time that I need to sit on the couch like a sack of potatoes and just veg out because I don't feel good. And that gives me a lot more time to create. Here's one that I used as a new mom. Chaos ensues in the household when you have children. And so what I used to do, I don't have to do it anymore. So it gets easier. If you're in this situation, it gets easier. I promise. Just hold out hope. But don't put your art off until your children are grown up. Do it now. So what I would do back in the day is I would get up at 4.30. Now I would go to bed earlier, so it's not like I'm getting up and feeling horrible. I would go to bed really stupid early, like 8.30 or 9. <laughs> and then I would get up at 4.30 or 5, and I would have at least an hour or two of quiet house where I could paint quietly. And I'm a morning person, so that worked for me. So just think about where in your schedule that you could sacrifice something I even had Patreon students leave my Patreon at the time because my voice was too raspy in my voiceovers. My voice was too raspy in my voiceovers because I had just woken up. <laughs> All right, here's another weird tip you're not going to hear anywhere else but here. And that is the conversation I had with my friend on a vacation that led to me 
finding more time. What happened was I went on a trip with my friend and she was telling me about a conversation she had with her husband and her husband's like, I'm not privileged. I work hard just like everybody else. And she said, listen, whenever the children have a doctor's appointment or any other kind of appointment, I'm the one who just automatically takes time out of my day, puts work aside, takes time off work, and takes them to their appointments, goes to their school meetings, whatever it may be. No questions asked. We don't even discuss it. It's just assumed that's who should do it. That's privilege. And he said, oh, this is a conversation maybe we need to have more often and, and check to see if this is what's going on. And so I was like, oh, that is so insightful. That was so interesting. And I learned something about privilege that I hadn't realized. So I took that home to my husband. I wasn't trying to get him to do more. He already does so much, but I probably do quite a bit more, especially housework. <laughs> and so I told him, hey, listen to this conversation. Wasn't it crazy? And he's like, oh yeah. And I, of course, you know, you do a great job. This isn't about you, but this was an interesting conversation. And so he started volunteering Nay, he started insisting on taking our son to a lot more appointments, and there are a lot. <laughs> so I got a lot of time out of that. I got a quiet house. Look at your situation at your home. Are there chores that you could delegate? Are there conversations that might need to be had and see if you can get some more help? I don't know. Try it. It worked for me. I didn't expect it to. It was awesome. <laughs> I don't have a perfect house. I don't have a perfect yard. There's a lot of messes outside. There's a lot of messes inside that just get ignored. There are projects that need to be done. They should have been done two or three years ago. The fence outside should have been painted three years ago. And I just, I just don't do them. And if I had the money, I would pay someone to do them. So if you have money, you could pay people to do stuff for you. That's really fortunate. So I hope that is your situation. And I recently, did hire someone to help me with the lawn. I found a high school boy that could come and mow the yard for 20 bucks. So if you have next door, uh, a lot of communities, a lot of suburban com communities have next door. So get on nextdoor.com, join your community forum and put out messages. Are there any teenagers out there that want to do housework? I used to do housework as a teenager. I was really good at it. There are some teenagers out there that can really do good work. They're not going to do it the way you would exactly do it but at least it kind of gets done <laughs> and you didn't have to do it. So you kind of have to let go of that perfectionism. I think I am going to mention a couple books. There's a book called the art of war that talks about resistance. And his theory is that a lot of people say, uh, I'll do my art when the children are grown. I'll do my art when the house is clean. I'll do my art when the yard is perfect or whatever. And what actually is happening is a form of procrastination he calls resistance. So that's a valid thing to really look at. Are you doing that? I definitely do that. Sometimes it's just more fun to clean the kitchen than it is to face a scary painting. And another really good book, if you are experiencing resistance type problems, creative blocks, Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way is such a good book. If you're blocked or you need more creativity, you want to get your creativity flowing. I talked about it in my last video about how to be more creative. So be sure to check out that video about how to be more creative because there's a lot of fun things to do because usually to get, be more creative, it takes um, fun stuff. So that's a fun video to watch. And, oh, this is another thing that has really helped me with these acrylic paintings is, okay, this whole space is for my watercolor. Uh, painting. So all my stuff is out. I don't put it away and bring it back out every day. That takes a lot of time. And so it really does help to have a space in your house to create. I also have my studio in an area that's in the family room where we all congregate and sometimes it can get hectic, but it's, this is where I work. A lot of mediums, you really don't need a ton of space to create. So think about a place in your home where you can set things up and kind of leave them out and not have to clean them up every time. But if you do have to clean them up every time, get yourself set up the night before you want to have a painting session or an art session so that you're ready to go the next day. I'm going to give you my final tip that helped me so much when I was tired, overwhelmed, had a full-time job. I used to be a school social worker and I, it was stressful and it was uh, a lot of hours. And so I would come home and I would just want to watch TV. 
So I did, but I played a trick on myself. And you wanna know what that trick was? I would just tell myself that I am going to paint during the commercials. I would take a break during the rest of the show. What happened is I would get into a painting session. I'd paint during the first commercial and then my show would come back on. I wouldn't even notice the show came back on. And like an hour later, I'd look up and I'd be like, oh, I just didn't watch that. <laughs> and I got so many paintings done. If you go on my Etsy shop or my, my website and you see the hundreds and hundreds of paintings, of prints of paintings that I did, most of those were done during that era. And I had so much painting time because I would paint every night while I was watching TV. And it was a great way to find time in my schedule to make art. So I hope that helps you. Remember to say no too. Say no to things that aren't important to you. Oh, my battery's dying. I gotta go. I gotta go. My battery's dying. So thank you so much for joining me. Like this video. Like this video. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. And leave my mommy a comment. And leave my mommy a comment. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Boo. Listen, we want people to watch our videos so I get more views, so I make more money. And so you be a one point. I can save more money for your college, Two. basically. One. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Now go watercolor your world or whatever kind of art you do. Bye, everybody. <laughs>